Assalamu alaikum warahmatullah. My name is Haris Dhiri and I am present in Medina Sharif. Right now, I'm actually preparing to head to Mecca, inshallah, for Umrah. So I will show you guys the entire process. I have my dad with me as well. So I'll show you guys the entire process. Uh, before I get into the video, please make sure to drop a like, leave a comment, and also subscribe and hit the bell icon. Zakhlaf hai. This is Masjid Bilal ibn Rabah. It's about half a kilometer distance from Masjid Nabwi. There's tons of markets underneath this masjid and also behind it, where you can find things such as prayer mats, dates, and a lot of other hadi items. So if you're looking to shop, I definitely recommend going here. So this area comes right after Masjid Bilal across the street on Abdul Mohsen ibn Abdul Aziz road. And you can find a lot of the Bukhari style foods here. So Bukhari fish, Bukhari goat, mutton, and it's really fresh and good. And now we are passing by Masjid Quba in Medina. And this place is extremely special. As a matter of fact, Prophet وسلم, and Abu Bakr as-Siddiq first stayed here when they emigrated to Medina from Makkah. And this is where you pray two rakat nafil when you enter the city of Medina. This is Mika Dhul Hulayfa, also known as Masjid Shajra, meaning Mosque of the Tree. And this is the Mikat spot for anybody who lives in Medina Tul Manawra or is traveling from Medina to Mecca. And this is a spot where pilgrims going for Umrah or Hajj enter the state of Ihram. Now this Mikat by far is the longest distance to Mecca. And what's great for the pilgrim is that you can purchase all of your Umrah and or Hajj supplies from here, including ihrams, belts, you know, slippers, everything. So if there's a chance that you might have forgotten something, you'll be able to purchase it here. Now I just want to take a moment to say that while arriving here, I became very emotional because a sudden realization hits you that you're going to be arriving to the house of Allah very soon, that he's given you the opportunity and invitation to come to his house, the very place you've been praying towards your entire life, five times a day. If you haven't ever gotten a chance to perform Umrah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you that chance and opportunity to perform Umrah and visit his house and Madinah al Ameen. And if you already perform Umrah and or Hajj, may Allah accept your Umrah and or Hajj and grant you multiple more opportunities to come to his house and to Medina al Manawra. Ameen. So the beautiful history behind this Mikat is that Prophet وسلم, left from Medina in the morning and arrived to this Mikat at about Asr time and he prayed Asr, Maghrib and Isha here and stayed the night before departing for Makkah the next morning. This place is also known as the Mosque of the Tree or Masjid Shajira because as you can see in this place right here, there used to be a tree where Prophet وسلم, rested and this is the reason why it's called Mosque of the Tree because that tree gave shade to Prophet وسلم. The area that this Mikat is located is also known as Abiyar Ali. So after leaving the Mikat, you reach a place that is known as the Medina checkpoint. And once you pass this checkpoint, you're out of the city limits of Medina. So while you're passing through this checkpoint, just please make sure to have your mask on and wear your seatbelt so that the driver doesn't have to face any difficulties because of that. Near Wadi Al Fura'a, we came across these um, primates. They were actually baboons on the road. It was roughly for about a stretch of one mile. And uh, this place is famous actually for having these baboons here. Oftentimes, people will stop their cars and uh, the baboons will jump onto your car.
course, it's always a good thing to feed them. But uh, you want to make sure you take caution and don't open your window all the way. Just crack it open a little bit and uh, you can give them food. They take it right from your hands. But again, uh, safety is key here. But you want to make sure that you do everything with as much precaution as possible because uh, at the end of the day, these are wild animals. As you can see, um, our driver actually uh, was handing one of them a water bottle. The first one declined it, but another one comes up from the roof and grabs it. And they, they actually open up the water bottle like an actual person. It's really funny. And as soon as we reach the city limits of Mecca, we are passing by the Qabr Mubarak of Hazrat Maymuna bint al Haritha radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A very interesting and beautiful fact is that the same spot where her Qabr Mubarak is located is the first spot that she met the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for marriage. Subhanallah. While watching this, or if you're visiting in person, please make sure to recite this dua that I have up on the screen and then type I mean in the comments. Jazakallah. So at this point we had just about reached our hotel in Mecca and there were a lot of policemen standing there so I had to end the recording because you're not allowed to record them. And the next clip will begin with us walking to Masjid Al Haram. Now Isha prayer led by Sheikh Abdul Rahman al Sadis had just finished and I was walking towards the Kaaba with my father. And the moment I first laid my eyes upon the Kaaba, I was breathless. Like literally I could not move or say a word. And I just became so focused in just zikr of Allah and His greatness. Allahu Akbar. And this is the reason why I did not record myself doing tawaf because I wanted to put 100% pure focus into ibadah. And these clips that you see now are after we've performed tawaf and prayed to rakat sunnah. Now I'm headed to Sa'i and this is basically going between Mount Safa and Mount Marwa a total of seven times. I just want to point out real quick that the Saudi government has done an excellent job accommodating the elderly and disabled by adding this uh, new system for motor scooters and uh, they've basically created lanes for these motor scooters and it makes uh, doing this part of Umrah so much easier for them. And uh, when you get to Mount Safa, there is a dua that you have to read. Um, you can see it up on the screen right now. You want to make sure that you recite this and try to look at the Kaaba if possible. And make any dua that you'd like.
now I'm heading back to Mount Marwa and uh, you can see the green lights um, and this is a note for all the males that once you reach the green lights you must run as fast as you can with all of your might and strength and you run until the end of the green lights so when the green lights end that's when you resume back to normal pace and as you can see right here is Mount Marwa at this point you recite that same dua that I had up on the screen at Mount Safa now we just have to go and get our heads shaved I'm not going to record this part of the vlog just because it's pretty standard. Though I do want to point out that you can go right underneath the clock tower and you will find barbers there who are able to do this part for you. Please make sure to like this video, subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell icon as I'm going to be releasing a lot of new videos that include very special ziarats and videos with tons and tons of advice and tips for any international traveler who intends to go for Umrah or Hajj in 2021 and 2022 and beyond. Jazakallah khair.